Todd has just gained 50 yards with his driver. Now we guarantee you, if you follow the same steps that we took Todd through, you're going to hit the golf ball further and more consistently. Now, before we get to the lesson, if you're serious about improving your game this year and you're not yet a subscriber, make sure you hit the subscribe button to never miss our weekly videos. Let's get started. We can see that a straight shot to the right, a hook to the left, and then a beautiful little draw in the middle. That was the range. So I think the important thing is to understand what we're looking at today is we want to create some more consistency with your accuracy but also some more consistency with your distance as well, because I think the strike gets messed up a little bit as well. If we think about this, you've got what we would call a hook or a draw pattern to your golf swing. And full swing is telling us this because the full swing has averaged out at five degrees to the right. We'll explain that in a moment, but that one was 6.4. Okay. So every single shot that you've hit, your club is swinging out to the right a lot. Yeah, has that surprised you? It did. Completely. So just, just quickly on that then. So why, why did that surprise you? What have you been working at in your game? I'm trying to stay flatter uh, on my backswing with my drive because I used to really come over the top. Do you still think that you were over the top? And I think you alluded to this earlier. I, I'm sure I am. I have to be. So I'll tell you what we'll do. Just take your setup for me. Okay. okay so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this stick over here. Okay. And one thing that we will go through, and this is interesting because your shots at the beginning today, you were popping them right up in the air, weren't you? Yep. Now, this has actually changed. It's got better as the session has gone on because your ball position was in a different place. But I'm just going to put that through there. That's pretty much where your ball position is relative to a straight line target, which is there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, do me a favor. Yep. Come and stand behind here and come have a look at where you were aiming. In relation to the red flag. In relation to the red flag. <laughs> you know what the best thing was? I don't think the cameras picked yeah. that up, but it was like, I'm aiming over, oh, and I'm meant to be hitting it over there. It We're aiming at the car park. Yeah. yeah. So again, when we do this, it's helped condition a change, but it may not be exactly what we're after for consistency. Okay, so I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Let's just go through the analysis. So we can see from, this is a previous video that we did. We can see how far to the right you are aiming. So a long way to the right. Okay. As you then swing back, and down, we can see the club on the way down, you are under that plane. Okay. So you're not over the top. Okay. So as far as the front on view, I want you just to take your dress to the ball again for me if you could. So what we're seeing here is, we're seeing really narrow stance. Okay. And the ball definitely has a, has a tendency to go too far back in the stance as well. Okay. So if we think about this, when we have a narrow stance, we often talk about this, a narrow stance often creates an intention of, of hitting it softer and not getting distance. Okay. As soon as we widen the stance, it gives us a bit more chance to have a bit more freedom and a bit more energy into the shot as well. Okay. But the one thing that we have to look at is this ball position okay. as well, because that ball position, if it gets so far back in the stance, we can easily pop it up in the air. So what we're gonna do, this is gonna be really important. How are we gonna get you to set up now these are a savior for you. This, okay. is, this is the most important part of your golf now. And I recommend that every single one of you, when you practice, you do this consistently, especially with the driver, well, with everything really, but if certainly with the driver to know where you're aiming and where the ball position is. So I'm gonna look at this line here. I'm sort of getting this red line here. I'm making sure that this is 90 degrees to our target line. This is gonna help us with our ball position. So there we go, straight away. He knows, the good thing with this is he knows where he should be putting his foot. He knows that the left heel there is where the ball needs to be. Let's go slightly wider stance. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this stick on the ground. This is gonna help us with our alignment of our body. Okay. So I'm gonna run this stick on the ground parallel to the target line. If we get this as we want, by aiming as we want here and by having the ball slightly further forward, that number there that says 6.4, I want that to get nearer to three. Okay. Still to the right though, because I still want to play draw. Now, when, when somebody asks us for consistency, what does it mean? How do we get consistency? One of the key things is getting somewhat close to the plane. When the path is extremely right or left, sometimes it's very hard to get that consistency. Yep. Okay. okay, set up for me. So we can see the ball is further forward, the stance is wider, Tell me when you're ready. Yep. Sometimes this is really important for you watching this as well. When we put the golf ball further forward in the stance, let's just put the ball over there, let's exaggerate it. If the ball goes further forward in the stance, look where the shoulders can go. So what I'm gonna say now is when we move the golf ball further forward, we need to make sure our shoulders are still square. Got it. Very nice. The, the great thing about this is, and we always talk about this actually, it's interesting that, that your friends, Andy and Josh, both were doing the same thing, aiming right. Yeah. 
And when we aim right, generally, the body doesn't move and sequence in a great way. When we aim more square, yeah. you can now work in a good way because you haven't got to fight the ball going to the right. Your average club speed was 83.9 mile an hour. The last one you hit was 87.2. <laughs> okay. right. But just because right. your body was able to move in a better way, right. all around this alignment. Yeah. Got it. Okay. One question, because I'm trying to keep this shoulder up, but yes. I should focus not only on that, but then keeping this one back. That's what it needs right? to feel like, yes. But you've just got to be careful not to over overdo it and start aiming way right again. Yeah, it's a right. It's a fine balance between aiming everything miles right and just having the right foot back slightly and just squaring the shoulders yeah. up. So here's the feedback, and this is something we need to understand that if you've got mirrors at a driving range yeah. or you've got big patio windows at home that you can yeah. practice in this practice your setup in the garden, because this is just setup. One thing that we haven't actually said yet really is amazing work on the golf swing, because the golf swing was really good. You're just aiming in the wrong place. The the gun or the, the, yeah. the bow and arrow was good, but you just weren't actually aiming it in the right place. Understood. Okay. okay. Set up again for me. Ha! Huh. That's so different. And notice how there's not one shot gone to the... Notice how... Look, no, how, wait, look where it's pitched. Let me, yeah. And here's, the, here's the difference with this, right? That's nuts. You change your alignment, nice change your flat. alignment, and it's like left, 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 not nice shots. Okay. And then all of a sudden your body just goes Ah, oh, I'm figuring this out, and it just goes straighter and straighter and straighter without you having to cognitively yeah. think about anything. The, huh. the setup changes your whole intention and goes, gives you the confidence to go, oh, I can swing better now. Okay. Do you need club one? speed on that one? Do you want to know club speed? Yeah, Harry. I do. Bear in mind the average was 83.9 earlier, yeah. 91.7. Oh, my goodness. But just because now you're free to move in a better way. Got it. What's the uh, carry on that one? 210. Hang on a bit, 210, the best I saw before was 170. But that's huge. That's, that's a big difference. Do you know what I think a good thing for you to do actually, Todd, when it comes to your alignment? Yep. Is almost going square. Okay. And then just do that. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah, so really good. nice. Look at the carry now. Yeah. It's still in the air. I mean, it's pitched over that green now. I've never hit the ball this far, ever. Two, 219 carry, 91.7 mile an hour club speed on that. Really look good. At that as well 2.4 so you want it to be longer and more consistent we should stop the video now <laughs> my concern is my concern is these are kind of your training wheels yep. what's it going to be like without those got it so tell you what we're going to do we're going to have our ball on the tee but when you practice the majority of the time we want these sticks on the ground okay other than when you're practicing what i'm about to show you now so we've got red flag as our target yeah yep. so i'm going to pick a spot on the ground just a couple of feet in front of me. Okay. I'm just going to uh, highlight it with this tee. Probably should have been a white tee or something like that, but that black tee there. Okay. Just confirm that's on the target line for me, pretty much, yeah? Yep. Good. Okay, so this is how we're going to do this. If you stand here with your feet together like this and just worry about aiming that club at that target, I think that's going to be our okay. best starting point. Okay. But from here, what we're going to do, we're going to get the left foot, we're just going to turn the toes to the target, and then the right foot, we're going to take our stance. Okay. So obviously with you for your right foot, we're just going to draw the foot back slightly closed, slightly closed, and then we'll get our hands on the golf club. And the only thing from here now we're really looking at is making sure that we're used to seeing square shoulders and not open shoulders. So my, my left shoulder was up, but this one was still too far forward, almost in every one. Is that... Uh, uh, only really when we moved the ball further forward in the stance. Got it. As soon as we moved the ball further forward, and it wasn't bad, right. but I could see it creeping I, in that, that way. That just helps my mind know what to, to, yeah. to work on. But for anyone watching this, this is crucial. You need to understand your alignment with the sticks, but then you need to understand how to aim as well when the sticks aren't there. Great shot. Beautiful shot. All right, let's look at the difference here. So front on view, look at the difference in the setup from the width of the stance, mm -hmm. a lot more athletic. The legs are ready to go now. The ball is a lot further forward in the stance. As we go down the line, we can see the alignment, big difference in the alignment, a lot more nearer the target. We know the shoulders are square as well. Mm -hmm. As you swing the club back and down, we can see that club is a lot nearer to the plane now. It's not so much underneath the plane. It's never over the top. This is allowing you to hit the ball straighter and longer. And more consistent. Huge. Appreciate and more consistent. Appreciate, appreciate it, guys. Huge difference. <laughs> Amazing. Appreciate it. Okay, guys. Right. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did enjoy that, you're going to love this video right here. And don't forget to check out meandmygolf.com for all our best content or simply download the Me and My Golf app. Thanks again.